Hey you guys, so um, this is problem 33 from chapter 7. It's a series RL circuit and um, switch is open before time 0 and closed after time 0. We have, um, we're given the current, the current is 4 plus 4E uh, to the negative 40T and we're given voltage across the inductor to be negative 80E to the negative 40T volts. And we want to find the value of the source voltage, uh, the re value of the resistor, the initial current stored in the inductor, the value of inductance for part A, and then for part B, we need to find uh, T, uh, the time when the energy stored in the inductor is down to 9 joules. So that's a lot of stuff. Um, okay, so normally I would give you guys some hints, but this is a pretty involved problem. Try it and then just check your answer. Um, I end up using uh, just Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's, Kirchhoff's voltage law when I um, am finding Vs or yeah Vs. So it's going to be Kirchhoff's voltage law. So voltage drop across that, voltage drop across that. Um, R is just V over I. Um, so we have V, we have I, it's just V over I. Um, I0, the initial current, is going to be just the current uh, and uh, evaluate it at time zero. And then the inductance is you're going to use L is equal to V di dt, I think. No, V, you're going to use voltage across inductor voltage which is V is equal to L di dt to find inductance. And then part, uh, part B, part B is pretty involved. And you're going to use the energy for an inductor formula, since we're looking for energy. Um, energy is uh, 1 half Li squared. There you have all of the formulas. I guess I did go over it anyways. Um, pause your video, try it, and let's get started. So the first thing when you're taking a test and you're looking at general equations for anything is to always remember the format that the voltage and the current is given to you. That information is commuted, communicated in the exponent. Remember, E is the, uh, e, the format of the E is of the form negative T over tau. So just automatically make it a habit. To look at the exponent and remember, oh, that's E, that, that is really representing that number, whatever it is, is really um, 1 over tau. It immediately gives you information. Can we use that information? I don't know, but I'm going to gather it because it's given to me. So, and I am a minimalist, the ultimate electron. I take the path of least resistance, and you should too. So, um, so we know that the 40, right, so the exponent always communicates information about the time constant. So we know the 40 is equal to 1 over tau. And remember what tau is in an LC circuit, right? In an RC circuit, it's RC. In an LC circuit, it's L over R, I think. Yes. So tau is equal to L over R, right? So what does that tell me? This tells me that tau, 1 over tau, right? If I flip this around, I'll get tau. Therefore, if I flip that around, I'll get the equivalent, right? Or if you really want me, because uh, someone said I went too fast with the math. So if you want to solve for tau, you just do cross multiply, right? So tau then is equal to 1 over 40 which since tau was equal to L over R, right, then this is going to be, I flipped it around, then this is going to be R over L. Sorry, this should be 1 over 40, right? So this gives me a relationship. Let me double check, make sure I didn't do any, make any mistakes, and I'm not building on it. So this gives me a relationship between R and L. I can do a cross multiply. And I get, I'll get L is equal to 40 R. 
Now, again, right now, I don't know if that, that's going to be useful information at all, but it's some kind of information that was easy to gather. Okay, I'm coming back to that, and my gut feeling is that it's going to be useful because I'm looking for L and R, and the more information that I can get, the better. So I always start, remember, always start with the exponent, never forget that. And now, the next step to the path of least resistance in solving this is the, this is a, a guinea, really easy, right? Initial current in the in inductor, I0, I0, is just equal to I of 0, right? And that is equal to 4 plus 4E raised to the negative, raised to the 0, right? Amps. Anything raised to the 0, E to the 0 is 1, so that gives me 8 amps. So we have 8 amps initially stored in the inductor. Now, the rest of it is a little bit harder. Took me a couple of tries to find them. Um, to find R, let me see, what did I do? Oh, okay, the next thing that I did was I found the inductance using um, V voltage, VL of T, voltage across the inductor is equal to L DI DT. Um, okay, we have uh, the voltage, that's negative 80 e to the negative 40 t. We don't know what L is, and we know what current is, so d, d, t of 4 plus 4 e to the negative 40 t, right? All right, so we have negative 80 e to the negative 40 t. That's equal to L. Differentiate that. The 4 is a constant, goes away. This becomes 4 times negative 40, and e to the negative 40 t, right? So then we have negative 80 e to the negative 40 t, that's equal to L times negative 160 um, e to the negative 40 t, right? If I divide both sides by negative 160, 160e to the negative 40t, you see that e's cancel out, I'm left with negative 1, negative 80 over negative 160, which is 1 half. So L is 0.5 Henry's. Okay. Um, R, I think, was the next easiest thing to solve, and that's just V over I. So... Let's see. No, actually, R is even easier than that. R is even easier than that. So here, we found this cool relationship. E, L is equal to 40 R. So R, therefore, is L over 40. Um, no, did I do that math right? Nope, 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 nope. I have it exactly backwards. Let's do this again. So tau, right, is equal to, wait, the exponent, 40, is equal to 1 over tau, right? So, but tau, 40, tau is really equal to the 1 over L over R, right? Since it's in the denominator, so that is going to get flipped around to the top. So this is going to become R over L. Cross multiply, and we have R is equal to 40 L. Okay, so now we know what R is. R is equal to 40 L. So 40 times 1 half is 20. So R, this R is 20 ohms. Okay. Um, v source. For this one, I believe I used, um, yeah, I just used Kirchhoff's law, right? This is a, the sum of, vol the total voltage is equal to the sum of the voltage drops across each circuit element. So, V source then must equal um, I R plus 
Well, the current, the voltage drop, V, of, um, is, uh, let me see, LDIDT, so it's going to be LDIDDT, okay? Well, I is just 4 plus 4E to the negative 4DT, and R we know to be 20. That's that one right there. LDIDT is going to be 1 half DDT, derivative of I, right? And the derivative of I is going to be, that constant goes away, it's going to be negative 40, it's going to come down, multiplied by 4 will be negative 160, so it's going to be 1 half times negative 160E to the negative 40T, okay? Um, I'm going to put factor this through, this gives me 80, plus, this times this is 80, AE to the negative 40 T, and this one half of that, of 160, negative 160 is negative 80, E to the negative 40 T, 80 minus, one, minus 80, plus 80 minus 80, and we're left with just 80, so the source voltage is 80 volts. That's part A. Now, part B, Okay. Part B, we need to find what is the time when the initial, when the, the energy stored in the inductor is going to be 9 joules. So for that we need the energy formula. Omega of T is 1 half Li, Li squared. Okay? And from here it's just math. We know we want 9 joules. We want to find that value, what the time is. So 1 half times L, you know, the inductor is 0.5 Henry's, right? And then I, I is 4 plus 4 E to the negative 40 T, right? And square that. And now it's just mathematics to find T, right? So we know 9 is equal to... One half times one half is 0.25. 0 0.25 times, I'm going to foil this out, right? So first, it's going to be 16. Outside, it's going to be um, 16e to the um, negative 40t, and there's going to be two of, two of those, so no, actually. Oh, I, oh man. I'm just going to go ahead and foil it because I can't really do this stuff in my head very well. I make mistakes. So, 4 plus 4e to the negative 40t times 4 plus 4e to the negative 40t, right? So this gives me 9 is equal to 0.25 times first is 16. Outside is this times this, which is 16. Okay, 16e to the negative 42, inside's going to be the same, so I'm going to have 32, 32e to the negative 40t, and then outside I have 16 plus 16e to the negative 40t, right? Okay, and then what I do is I distribute the uh, 0.25 through. And that will give me 0.25, 1 fourth of 16 is 4, so 9 is equal to 4. This is 1 fourth of 32 is 8, plus 8e to the negative 40t. And then 1 fourth of that is 4, plus 4e to the negative 40, 80. This should be 80. 80t, right? Okay. Now, we're going to use a, um, bring the 9 to the other side. Okay, bring the 9 to the other side will give us 4e to the negative 80t plus 8e to the negative 40t uh, minus 5 is equal to 0. So how do we solve this? It looks an awful lot like a quadratic formula. If we do let x 
equal e to the negative 40t, right? And this becomes 4x squared plus 8x minus 5 equal 0. Okay, 4x squared, no mistakes so far. I'm going to use the AC rule, right? AC rule says if you, if you multiply this coefficient times that, in this case it's negative 20, and its factors can make the B, then you can factor it. So, in this case, the factors are 2 and 10. Plot positive 10 and minus 2 will give me 8 in the middle, so I can use the AC rule. And so, this means I can rewrite this as 4x squared, um, 4x squared plus 10x uh, minus plus, uh, let me see, minus 2x minus 5 equals 0, right? Okay, so now, what I'm going to do here, i got 4x squared plus 10x, so then I'm going to go, 4x squared plus um, 10x minus, this gives me 2x plus 5 equals 0, right? And now we're going to factor out a 2x from here. 2x gives me 2x plus 5 minus 2x plus 5 equals 0, right? Now, what do I have? I have a 2x plus 5 here, a 2x plus 5 there. I can factor out a 2x plus 5. What do I have left? I have 2x minus 1, right? Equals 0. So now, I have a factored form of the equation and I can solve it, right? So this equation will be, will be true when you have 2x plus 5 equals 0, and, or when 2x minus 1 equals 0. So let's solve for x. Here, x is equal to negative 5 halves, and here, x is equal to 1 half. But remember, x was, we said x was equal to negative 40, t is equal to negative 5 halves, right? And here, e to the negative 40, t is equal to 1 half, right? Because we use the substitution rule to solve this. So, we have the t is in the exponent. Let's take the natural log to bring it down. You take the natural log of e to the negative 40 t here. And that's going to be equal to natural log of negative 5 halves. Okay, this will give you a non-result, so that's not going to be the solution. Because that's a non-real result, natural log is not defined for negative numbers. Now, over here we have natural log of e to the negative 40 t is equal to 1 half. Then we have negative 40 t is equal to natural log of 1 half. So t then is going to be natural log of 1 half over negative 40. And my calculation shows that that should give you t is equal to 17.3 milliseconds. And that is this problem.